on this page, you will identify that I have included three timelines. One for our IS 16 principles, two for our IS 40, and the third one for our IS 38 principles. Now, why is it important for you to be able to distinguish between the different principles within the different standards? Remember, when you read through an integrated question, you will receive one paragraph and you need to be able to identify within that paragraph which standards will be applicable. Therefore, you need to know how to recognize and measure the asset within that standard. Now, we are going to look at our initial recognition first from a theory discussion point of view, that you need to be led by the number of marks available. Therefore, guys, normally when you look at your assets section, you will have to discuss your asset definition in terms of your conceptual framework. Then you need to identify that you need to discuss the definition in terms of the applicable standard being I is 1640. 38. Then the next important thing, once you have identified that this is an asset within our three standards, you need to know how to initially measure this asset. Now, when you look at IS16, this will be at cost. When you look at IS40, this will be at cost. Now, extremely important with IS16 and IS40. The standard indicates to us the costs that should be included and excluded. Therefore, you need to ensure that you know which costs you need to include and exclude. Now, when we look at IS38, there is five different types of how an intangible asset can be acquired. Now, the first type will be based on a separate acquisition, then you need to recognize this asset at cost. Again, IS38 will indicate to us certain costs will be included and certain costs should be excluded. Number two, through a business combination in terms of IFRS3, now I'm pretty sure you know at fair value. Number three, I is 20 government grants. Now guys, excluded from our SACA examinal pronouncements. Number four, exchange of assets. Now important, the principles regarding our exchange of assets for I is 36 and I is 16 is exactly the same guys. Therefore, when you study this, this is the same principles. Therefore, you only have to study this once exchange of assets. Then number five, our very important one, internally generated assets. Now guys, this is NB. When you look at these five, our first one, separate acquisition is important and our internally generated assets. Now internally generated assets are divided into a research phase where you need to know you will have to expense the costs and a development phase. Now the development phase can be capitalized only if the following six criteria are met. Now guys, all of them, this is an and. Now you can work through this. We have covered this in detail within our IS38 lectures. Now let's have a look at our next step, our subsequent measurement. Now, when we look at a subsequent measurement, and we only look at our IS16, our PPE can either be measured based on the cost model or based on the revaluation model. Now, what you need to remember is the revaluation model on your depreciable assets will be excluded. Therefore, important guys, you are going to get a question on land where land is revalued. Now, what do you need to remember? From a tax point of view, our I is 12 principles on land. Remember, the initial portion on our land 
will not be taxed. Therefore, exempt cars and the revaluation surplus portion will be taxed based on our CGT rate. Now, let's move on to IS-40. IS-40 investment property. IS-40 indicates to us that investment property can either be measured at cost model and then it is important that you know that you will have to follow your principles of IS-16 or based on our fair value model. Now guys, when you have an investment property at fair value, please no depreciation. Remember, this is at fair value. You will have to recognize a fair value adjustment and this will be through your profit and loss. Then when we look at our IS38, either based on the cost model, now this is in terms of the principles of IS38, or based on the revaluation model in terms of IS16 principles that will be followed. But again guys, this will not be tested. Now next one, when we look at depreciation of our PPE assets, remember there's three different types. The first can be straight line method, second our diminishing balance method, and third our units of production method. Now it is important that you know that depreciation and amortization will start when the asset is ready and available for use as intended by management. Therefore, it is important that you read the information provided. Then our residual value. When you have to calculate the depreciation, please remember to deduct the residual value if there is any. And please read the information properly that they provide to you. Remember when they indicate to you that if they have to sell that asset at the end of its useful life based on the current condition, and they provide you an amount, that will normally be your residual value. Therefore, you need to be able to identify that. Now, when we look at IS40, remember, fair value model, no depreciation. Cost model, the same rules as per IS16. Now, let's move on to our amortization of intangible assets. Now, this is an important one. Why? You need to know that intangible assets can either have a finite use for life or an indefinite use for life. Now, an indefinite use for life, remember, this is an asset where we are not able to identify when is the end date? Therefore, there's no foreseeable limit to the period of cash to be generated. Therefore, there will not be any amortization on this asset. Important. When we have an asset with a finite use for life, you need to amortize this asset and the amortization shall be recognized in your profit and loss. Now guys, it is important to identify that you need to assume that the residual value will be zero unless they indicate to you otherwise. In a theory question, it is important that you are able to discuss that there is an assumption that there's no use for life unless, and please ensure that you know the paragraphs related to finite use for life. Now, our next important topic is derecognition, which isn't actually that difficult when you look at it. Now, IS-16 assets shall be derecognized when they are disposed of or when there is no future economic benefits to be expected. 
then you need to remember to recognize a gain or loss in profit and loss. Therefore, you will de-recognize the asset. You will have to take it out from your PPE. Therefore, credit the asset, debit your accumulated depreciation and impairments and recognize income received. The difference shall be a gain or loss in your profit and loss. Now guys, I want you to look at IS38, derecognition. Exactly the same as for our IS16. Therefore, again, you only have to study these principles once. Now, look at your IS40, derecognition. There is an additional sentence. Number one, yes, through disposal. Number two, if no future economic benefits are expected. And number three, when withdrawn from use. Okay, so we will have a look at this within our transfers. But what you need to know, when withdrawn from use, you need to take out your investment property. Therefore, credit your investment property. Now, the next important thing that we need to look at is the difference in the disclosures. Now, I know that this is pretty small fund and that you might not be able to read everything. But our full-time students, you do have access to all of these templates on Call Campus and in your lecture notes. Now, when you look at property, plant and equipment, what is very important to identify is that you need to include your assets separately, land separate, building separate, machinery separate, separate, and vehicle separate. Except when they indicate to you that they have categorized land and buildings as one. Then you will have to combine these two. And guys, emphasis on the fact that you need to read the information provided. If they indicate to you not to include a total, please don't waste your time with us. Then my recommendation as always, leave sufficient space lines for you to be able to add either calculations or additional items that you might have missed. For example, when you look at PPE and one of our assets should be transferred to our non-current assets held for sale, then you need to ensure that there is sufficient space for you to be able to include this line. Now, please look at your next standard IS40 disclosure. Now, this is the disclosure if your investment property is carried at fair value model. Remember, if the investment property is carried at cost model, you will follow the same disclosure as per PPE. When your investment property is carried based on our fair value model, you will start with an opening balance at the beginning of the year at fair value and end with your closing balance at the end of the year. Now, what is important to identify is that land and buildings will be combined. Do you see this, guys? You will combine your land and buildings. They will normally indicate to you that you will have property 1 or property 2 or property A or B or they will do this per region and so forth. Then you will have a line item additions with your acquisitions or subsequent expenditure capitalized. Remember, you can only capitalize your subsequent expenditure when it meets the definition and the recognition criteria. And important transfers, which we will touch on, and your fair value adjustments. Remember, these fair value adjustments should correspond with the amount in your profit and loss. And as always, Remember to leave sufficient space should you have to include a transfer to your non-current assets held for sale. Now, please have a look at your disclosure of your intangible assets. It is extremely important that you identify that intangible assets, you need to include two columns. One for internally generated assets 
and one for other assets. Then, very similar to your PPE note, you need to include sufficient space for additional lines such as a transfer to your non-current assets held for sale and remember to be able to include basic calculations. Now, when you look at your disclosure for your PPE, now guys, important to read the requirement section. If there is revaluations, and you will have a revaluation on land, you need to ensure that you identify if they want you to include narrative information at the bottom. Example, investment properties are stated at fair values, which have been determined based on valuations performed by Mr. X at 31 December 20.17. Then when we look at our intangible assets, again guys, you need to be able to identify if they want you to include the narrative information at the bottom of the note. Intangible assets consist of an internally developed packaging pattern. The internally developed asset has a carrying amount at year end of X and remaining use for life of X. Now, how do you know if you have to include the narrative information? You need to read the requirement. In your requirement, they will indicate to you that you need to disclose the note in terms of I is 16, paragraph 73, A, B, C, D, and so forth. Therefore, guys, you need to know where your disclosure paragraphs are included in your standard to be able to briefly read. Now, when we look at your tutorial letters, the self-assessment questions, you will identify that they do not actually include the narrative information. And there's one where they normally want you to include, and this will be if there is an IS8 change in estimate. Therefore, assumption, yes, you do not have to include narrative information, but please read should they want you to do this?